Well, I've gone and done something useful. So my overarching project is building a single board Z80 computer. And to get everything together, development tools, the reflow oven, the ability to solder stencil, I'm doing sub-projects before I build that board because that board's going to be a little bit complicated. So I'm practicing on building simpler boards, and I've already, as I mentioned in another video, built a minimal AT Mega 2560 board. But while I was waiting for parts to come in and as I'm figuring things out, I decided to build a little timer board. So what we have for Christmas decorations indoors and even outdoors is a lot of lighted knickknacks for indoors that are on five or six hour timers. So they're on for five or six hours and then they're off for the remaining 24 hour cycle and then they turn on again at the same time as you turned them on initially the next day and then they repeat that cycle until the battery dies. So that's nice. So a few years ago, I made a little printed circuit board with mostly all through-hole parts, except for the voltage regulator I could only get as a surface mount part. But a little one and a half inch by one and a half inch board that has an eight pin dip version of the AT Tiny 85. And it's a nice little chip that only has a few GPIO, but I only need one bit out. So the idea is I have one bit coming out of that chip and it's tied to MOSFET. And that MOSFET is going to switch the power on and off to a circuit that is essentially just LED lights. So I put it together and it's been working for several years. We've got this little basket with foliage in it and LED fiber optic. And it turns it on and off every night. And it lasts on a, I think I have a 1200 milliamp hour lithium battery pack. And that lasts the whole, almost, I would say the whole Christmas season. But our Christmas season gets extended beyond January 1st because we like to leave stuff up. So this time around, I'm thinking of projects to get me used to and practicing making surface mount boards. I decided to make a surface mount version of that board. So all surface mount, they have surface mount for the AT Tiny 85 and for the MOSFET and everything. So. I made a board that came in at like 19 millimeters by 20 millimeters. So here is a photo of just the printed circuit board. I already put one together and I put it inside so I don't, I can't take a picture of the completed board. But here is a picture of it and here's a 3D view of it. So basically the biggest thing on it is the ICSP header to program the thing. I haven't come up with a nice way to make something smaller but easy to use to program tiny boards. So this is this is the state of it as it is. To save on parts, I don't have a external clock. I'm using the onboard 8 megahertz oscillator which is an RC oscillator. It's not very stable, but it's good enough. And it defaults to a divide by eight on that for the system clock, leading to a one megahertz clock. And if you look at the data sheet running at one megahertz, and I've got 3.3 volts as the power supply, it's going to use maybe a milliamp of power while while it's running and it'll run continuously. I didn't bother sleeping it. So the circuit itself is really simple. There's a 3.3 volt voltage regulator. That's pretty simple to use. There is the AT Tiny 85. There's not much to it. And there is the MOSFET. 
and I've got I'm using the MOSI output pin so I'm doing double duty with that so the MOSI output pin I'm I'm using as my pin to control the MOSFET I've seen someone say I should have put a resistor between the pin and the MOSFET but I never did before and it seemed to work you probably if you do something like this should look into why you would put a resistor there the and then the other thing is just the icsp header which is spi and reset and power and ground i did not connect power and i regretted it because it meant i couldn't use my picket 5 programmer because it wants to see that there's power there though it doesn't supply power it wants to see that the circuit is powered so i had to use my avr isp mk2 which doesn't care if it's it's not looking to see if there's power there and all you need to do is maybe i did just in case jumper it for 3.3 volts for software it's really simple as you can see i set up the bit for output and then in the while loop i turn it on delay for six hours based on how many minutes are in six hours and then i turn it off and delay about the 18 hours of delay in minutes the reason why i chose minutes was just to make it simple to program the thing so i could play around with different timings based on minutes the delay loop itself i was starting to use the utils underscore delay ms routine but it was a little unpredictable and it has constraints on how long you can have the delay so i decided to just look at its internals and use the internal delay loop directly as you can see here i program it for a minute and i know it can handle the minute because they only have a one megahertz clock i compute the number of ticks myself so that there's no computation going on during the running of this thing uh, the number of ticks is pre-computed at compile time it makes it very stable but what i notice is if i just programmed it for the equivalent ticks for 60,000 milliseconds that it was actually taking an extra 500 or so milliseconds in the overall delay so what i did was i set up a a teensy lc microcontroller to monitor the mosi pin on this board which is the input to the mosfet and what it does is it measures the number of millis that go by between turning it on and turning it off and turning it back on again i found that if i set it for a minute on and a minute off that it was on for a minute and a half a second and off for about a minute and a half a second so somewhere in the net result of this code is an extra 500 milliseconds of delay per minute and i tried various other numbers of minutes and it turned out to be that that's about that's pretty consistent so when i compute the number of ticks i before i convert to ticks i deduct about 500 or so milliseconds from the 60,000 milliseconds and so it comes out to when it's running 10 minutes on and 10 minutes off it's only a second or so or less than a second late remember i'm using the onboard rc 8 megahertz clock and it's very possible that it's running slightly slower than 8 megahertz which could account for this slight discrepancy in the length of the delay loop so i could use the chips facility to adjust the calibration of that oscillator but there are constraints on what you can do as far as changing the calibration for instance if you change it too far you will make peripherals not work it uses that oscillator 
for timing for the flash and EEPROM. So you you could make those peripherals not work if you change the calibration too much. Also, you can't change the calibration in a one big step because there's a limit on what happens from cycle to cycle as far as changes to the clock speed. So it you have to gradually change the clock speed over some number of cycles to fit in this constraint. So rather than doing that, I'm just doing it at user level. I'm calibrating the clock. And that'll calibrate it for that discrepancy in the oscillator and any overhead in my loop that's not accounted for. So that's a story for my little timer version 2 project.